how I usually do it is I do these drawing plans and then I can do it on the computer and twine. And the artwork as well, so they do the development story and the music as well. What are you doing? Drawings, drawings for the story, drawings for the story. story. Is it a demon? 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 <laughs> so just do some drawings to the twine story. Hello Gleb, Mr. Gleb. What's your story about then? The story uh, is a horror story. A horror story? Yes. It's what? about a demon in the window and um, me. And you as well. You're in it. You're, you're a character in it, yeah. Me and my friends. And your friends, yeah. It's a classic horror story. Mm. What do you think? Uh, go for the... Mm -hmm. Wait. Well, you can wait on this one. Which one? Uh, go for the... Ah, it's a big one. You saw the house in this house, you saw a terrible silhouette. That's a good word, by the way. It has... It was, well, it was the devil, that's the spelling mistake actually. Fortunately, we were in tall women boots in the room of four rooms. Which room do you enter? Which one? I don't know. Acid? Water? Lava? Sharks? Don't know. Acid? I know. Yes. You won. So, finish the twine workshop now. I'm starting to put them all, get them all up on the website, recolartstories.com, which you can check out. The link up here somewhere. Um, an interesting range of stories this, this in this first session. We do more because I'm here for 12 weeks, but uh, interesting range of stories. Especially my favourite, I think, is probably there's a story called uh, Bakery Revolution, where they took the idea of. Uh, Revolution is almost like kind of a lot of political aspect of it, really, which is quite interesting. And they did some really, two guys that worked on that did some really interesting artwork, like comic book style. So it sort of blended interactive fiction because it had like comic book elements and uh, sort of absurd but silly, but uh, interesting story, which was like, he steals bagel and a whole lot of, a lot of bread, from what I remember. And there's a whole load of these random events of police chasing and stuff that happened. I guess sort of informed by like Grand Theft Auto. And interesting enough, inspired by um, recent political events in Russia, like protests at airports and stuff. So I thought that was quite interesting. And we had a story about space, because the whole theme of our session on it is space. So one of the groups did a story where we had to explore a planet. You either choose Mars or Venus, based on what you, and then the whole idea is to basically uh, interact with these new alien species. Uh, the Mars storyline was very well developed. The Venus one was sort of like a, they, they sort of approached it in the sense that the Mars story would develop very well, and you can have two endings, two a few different endings that way, a few different endings where you die, and two endings where you basically make peace with these aliens. Uh, the Venus story was a little undeveloped, undeveloped maybe, cause, but I think they did that to, to sort of put, catch you off guard. But basically, the Venus story, there's no real way to win, from what I could tell. But that had that had a very good branching structure actually for for the for the age of the group that were doing it, uh, like twelve year olds basically. But yeah, it's been uh, interesting. I'm, I'm still trying to develop how I do these workshops, twine workshops with interactive fiction. Sometimes, it can, I mean, having the example of an already existing library is useful because I've been doing it over the past two years with other groups. It's been very useful because it gives the students something to refer to and a sort of starting point. Um, so that's very useful. And having a website and an archive is also very useful. Uh, I think in the future, probably when I can, if it's for longer projects, probably utilise different engines as well. Even the Twine's very good. Twine's good because it's so easy to use. Uh, I mean, they basically usually, the way it usually proceeds is that we plan it out on paper and then I usually edit it in Twine 
though we have done it some, some, because of time constraints really, if you're working with a large group it can be very difficult to next to impossible really to get them all to build something into wine because we, well, we've got limited resources as well only on a laptop but uh, we manage and they usually understand once they get there and they sort of intuitively understand what a choose your adventure story is but um, yeah so I'll, I'll showcase some of the games talk a bit about those I've already mentioned Baker Revolution and uh, there's another one that was called I think Brainless it's quite a short adventure but it's basically a story where they often do games where you choose two doors I think because of the example there. there's another game called Locked Door which is sort of a short adventure random game about uh, going through different doors as well I guess because it's a very easy example um, but yeah I was very pleased with the Baker Revolution game that was really cool I've still got a few more to develop still so I've not seen all of them yet properly but it's been a pretty interesting workshop and something I'd uh, so like I, I guess like I'll, I'll talk a bit about a few tips if you want to do this yourself as a t sort of interactive fiction twine workshops like what are some tips for running it so I guess try and inspire their imaginations but also keep it quite realistic too uh, you, 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 you want to manage expectations because sometimes you know, kids are like sometimes their imagination to go wild and they think that they can create GTA or something like that. <laughs> or something, not necessarily that extreme, but that they, they, they just manage their expectations of what they can actually create. The, in my instance, the main exercise really is to improve their English, so it's more about trying to encourage them to write well. Uh, then, sort of, gaming elements can be a secondary thing there, really. Uh, though that obviously is, is obviously the ideal is if they develop a good narrative, a good story, and also a good game design aspect. So like good, interesting narrative that's interesting to explore, multiple endings and stuff is good to develop. Uh, the artwork side of things is pretty self-explanatory. Really, just they didn't know that. They just draw, draw artwork. Often they draw titles, which is good as well. Encourage them to do that, I suppose and uh, the comic book style is very interesting when they do that sort of like the comic book strip it makes it much more enjoyable to play their games as well so if they have time to do that I encourage them to do that I suppose uh, lastly I think I've already mentioned them have a example like when I first started doing these twine workshops I, I produced a game called uh, Hello to Baba Yaga which is a very simple multiple endings game where you talk to a witch and there's multiple different endings in that example and that can be quite useful because it's just they, they do they can just go on their phone or computer play an example and they will get the idea 10 times faster than explaining it or trying to explain it one of the difficulties i have often is that uh i'm with I'm, as i'm in a camp in russia i'm working with very mixed levels of english comprehension so that can be a real challenge sometimes, but I guess the real key thing is to break it down as simplistic language as possible uh, in terms of like the concept of what they actually have to do. But in general, I'm quite happy with the uh, the games we produced this this time, and be interesting to see how I can develop it in the future. So I'll leave it at that, and uh, I'll be no nerd. Check out Record Art Stories if you want. Uh, you can play all the games on there. Some of them, one of them is in Copy Cube as well. One of them is in um, another interactive fiction engine, Torino Builder. But the majority of the games are on Twine, so you can just play them on your web browser. Uh, I've been on Nerd and believe it that. It's very rainy now. It's sunny all day actually, but it's really you know, it's a classic British way to sign off a video just talking all over. Anyway, bye.